What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So there are a few key things that I focus on in this channel in terms of what you should be looking at when you're deciding which degree that you should go for. I talk a lot about salary, of course. I talk a lot about job satisfaction, uh, future growth, and then how many jobs are available now. And I think that the most important of all of those might actually be the future growth. And the reason for this is because it really tells you which degrees and which careers and the skills that, you know, you need to have in order to do those degrees and the and careers are ones that are extremely valuable right now. And this is going to affect a ton of other things. It's gonna affect the salary, of course, because if a ton of people want to hire people that have this degree or this skill, then there's gonna be a lot of competition and they're gonna to have to increase salaries. It's also going to affect your quality of life, your job satisfaction, because they're gonna to wanna to keep you. If you have the set of skills that they need, they're definitely gonna do whatever it takes to keep you. They'll give you really good benefits, they'll pay you more, they'll treat you really well I mean just picture you know Google employees how well they get treated it'll be something along those lines free these are complimentary complimentary free whatever you want so this is gonna be a super quick video I'm gonna jump right into it and we're gonna be talking about the fastest growing occupations in the next 10 years and of course I found this on bls.gov and uh, you know it's a great resource you should definitely look into it let me know if you want me to make a video on how to you know how to use it to do research on careers but let's start let's get right into this let's start with number one on the list number one uh, growing at a, an expected about 27.3 percent is going to be speech language pathologists and basically they're experts in sort of the mechanics of communication if that makes any sense so uh, if you've ever seen the movie the king's speech where you know a king needed to give a speech in the early 1900s to kind of rally the country uh, because world war ii was about to happen and he had a stuttering problem and he worked with a speech language pathologist <laughs> And they were able to fix his stuttering issue and he was able to give a very good eloquent speech. This is kind of what they do. You know, they work with uh, people who have, you know, issues swallowing as well. So just anything that has to do with that area, the mechanics of it is something that they are experts at. They get paid really well for this. They get paid around $77,500 uh, a year. That's, that's really solid. Wow, look at this. Do you know what this means? So this is a really good one to get into, to look into um, growing extremely fast. And you're gonna notice that there are a lot of health-related professions on this list. <laughs> There's a reason that I put health related degrees up on a high level and that's because there's just so much demand and you know you're pretty much always going to have a job with like 95% of them. Next on the list is going to be another health related degree that's nurse practitioner and they come in at about 28.2% growth which is just insane over the next 10 years. That That's just crazy. Now this one is more of like a six year degree. Um, generally you'll do like four years of undergrad and then two years of uh, nurse practitioner school. It's basically a master's level degree, um, but it's kind of like a nurse sort of. I think everybody knows what nurses do but they have a, a lot more you know range and scope of what they can do. So for instance, nurse practitioners can generally write prescriptions. They can generally diagnose people or help to diagnose uh, doctors and take a lot of the workload off of doctors as well. They have really good quality of life as well. That's a great thing about being a nurse practitioner versus being a doctor, for instance. You'll work generally about 40 hours a week and then you get to go home. It, it's, it's a lot nicer than being a doctor where you have to work like 60 to 80 hours a week and sure you get paid more, but quality of life is not that good. They make about $107,000 a year median annual income which, you know, that's pretty solid. But again, this is a six year degree, not a four year degree. So just keep that in mind. Next one on the list is going to be statisticians um, and they are growing at about 30.7% in the next 10 years. That is crazy. Now, I personally absolutely hate statistics. It's my least favorite type of math. I'm very bad at it as well. Um, but you know, hey, if you like statistics, if you like math, um, $87,700 a year and it's growing like crazy. This is one of the best uh, careers to look into if you're somebody who really likes mathematics. 
you know, you can make a, a, a killing off of it, like a really good living off of this. The next one on the list is grown at about 31.1% of the, uh, per year, and that's going to be physician's assistance. So physician assistant is a little bit similar to nurse practitioner. Um, there are some key differences, of course. It's another degree that takes around six years or so to get. So it's kind of like a master's level degree. Um, but it's growing, um, extremely fast. Uh, you know, I'll probably make a video where I go over the differences between nurse practitioner and PA. Um, they can both prescribe, they can both diagnose. Nurse practitioners generally can go to other countries, for instance, and they still have all of the, or most of the um, range and scope of what they can do in those other countries, whereas PAs, it's kind of only an American thing at this point. And there's a lot of other like little subtle differences, but you know, PA is amazing. They were basically designed to take a lot of the workload off of doctors. And uh, yeah, this is, this is a super, super good one to get into. They make about 108,600 a year and uh, they're growing really fast. So definitely another one to look into. <laughs> Three out of the top four so far that we've gone over have been health related careers. Uh, um, are you noticing a trend here? Information security analysts is next. They're growing at about 31.6% over a 10 year period. And what these guys do basically is they plan and implement uh, different security measures to protect you know, an organization's information. They'll design the different computer networks and systems so that they're safe, you know, no hackers can get into them and there's not gonna be any information leaks or anything like that. And as you can imagine with all the information leaks with like the target credit card and all that sort of thing, all these huge scandals, um, I think it was like Equifax or something like that uh, also happened to them. This is a huge, huge deal these days. I mean, this is very important that companies have their information on lockdown. It's extremely important, especially if you look in places like the healthcare field where you have HIPAA laws and you've got like uh, different health related laws where if any of that information gets leaked, it's even more serious. So as you can imagine, these guys are getting paid very well, an average of about 98,500 a year. You know, it's growing super, super fast. Another great one to look into, uh, very, very important, kind of like an anti-hacker sort of thing going on there. Next one on the list is going to be occupational therapy assistance, and it's growing at about 33.1% per uh, decade. And basically what they do is they're kind of like a physician's assistant a little bit, but they're going to help people who are trying to recover from injuries or maybe people who are a little bit older and they're not able to function normally. So they kind of help those people and they help the occupational therapists um, to either, you know, improve their ability to help themselves or just take care of them in general. And it looks like they're making about 60,220 per year. So that's very, very good. They're growing at about 33.1% uh, per decade, like I said, which is also excellent. So again, this is another health related one. So I'm, you know, I can't say that I'm surprised. Very good one to get into. Next one is going to be a much lower paying one, but there's a huge amount of demand. And in my opinion, like I said before, where you see a lot of demand, you're going to see the pay going up, right? And this is going to be personal care aids. Now it's growing at about 36.4% in the next decade, uh, just an insane growth because they're expected to have 881,000 of these jobs open up in the next decade, which is just, that that's crazy. That's like an entire country and just one job in the next decade. That's insane, but it only pays about $24,000 a year. Now, this is one of those where you don't need too much education or anything to get into it. So, you know, you can't really compare this to a six year degree or a four year degree, but still 24,000 is quite low. It's not what I'd like to see, but at the same time, you're still growing really fast. Uh, you have a lot of job security security, a lot of opportunity because there's so many jobs open. So this is a good one to look into. And the next one's very similar. It's home health aids and it's like a personal care aid, but they actually go to people's houses and they take care of them at those houses. Pretty self-explanatory, I think, but this one's growing even faster, 36.6%. Again, it pays around the same, about 24,200, which isn't very good. But like I said, when you have a lot of growth like that, I see this going up in the future. I think they are going to be paid better 
better in the future. And because of the fact that there's so much demand, you know, they don't have to go through too much in terms of training. So this is one that you can kind of get into very, very easily. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to go to college or anything like that, but you want to make a decent living, this is one to look into. The next one on the list jumps up to an absolutely insane 56.9% expected growth in the next decade. That is just, that's that's totally nuts. This one is going to be the uh, wind turbine service technician. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, those big turbines that you see when you're driving through Kansas without stopping because Kansas is really flat and boring. And I can say that because I lived there for a long time. Yeah, these are the guys, these are the people who take care of those big spinning turbines. And they get paid pretty dang well for it. They get paid about 54,370 a year and there's tons of demand for this one. So this is a really good one to look into. Next one on the list, this is actually number one. It's going to be solar photovoltaic installers. And that's kind of a big mouthful, but basically they install solar panels and that sort of thing onto different houses or they repair them or they maintain them. They just take care of those sorts of things in general. Now, this one is growing at an absolutely crazy 63.3% in the next 10 years. That is just, that's nuts. And you know, you make about 42,680, that's not too bad especially since you probably don't have to do too much training to get into this sort of thing, or you don't have to go to a lot of schooling. So that's actually pretty good. But I just wanted to say one thing about this list. If you noticed, six out of the top 10 were in the healthcare field. And one thing I always say on this channel, and some people will argue with me, is that when you go into the healthcare field, you have a pretty good chance of having a stable job. It's not like that for every job out there. You know, there's some jobs that are getting a little oversaturated right now. I'm definitely going to be making videos about that in the future, but overall you have a very, very safe and stable job when you're in the healthcare field. You don't really have to worry too much about getting fired or that sort of thing because there's literally all the time there's shortages in the healthcare field. I mean, if you work with a nurse or, or anybody in a pharmacy or anything like that, you'll probably have heard them talking about how you know they're short staffed or the last time you went into a pharmacy or, or anywhere else they were probably short staffed and that's because there's just not enough people to fill these jobs and that's really good that gives you a lot of leverage when you're an employee it's definitely something to think about and just chew over for a little bit but overall make sure you check out these videos right here smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any ideas that you have about the video. Thank you for watching and bye for now.